Hey, good afternoon guys. Anthony 4 Before Diesel. This is just going to be a series of short little bits of information videos. So lots of little things. We're just going to whack it all together to just give you a whole heap of information in general. So sit tight and we'll get organized and try and get it out to you and get straight to the point. This could be handy information. I'm just going to go through our messages and have a look at all the questions we get asked. So maybe some of the YouTube comments and quickly answer those questions. One of those questions is somebody said, you know what degreaser are you using now for the DIYs you guys at home the easiest most simple way these are the three main products we use in Australia these are purchased generally at Repco just get the cheap brands they do the same job without the expensive markup so you obviously got the degreaser cans I think these are Repco the export that's the super cheap auto type brand your throttle body carby cleaner let's say it's a bit like thinners and you got your brake cleaner brake cleaner is not only good for cleaning brakes but also any oil clean up type thing and it doesn't seem it sort of cleans and it dries everything up really well so after you change oil around the sump plug area after you wipe it spray it wipe it again it'll come up really dry and clean so you know you haven't got a leak cut carby throttle body cleaner top exactly that throttle body cleaner right pretty well that anything like that that you want to clean fine detail type cleaning spray it onto that throttle body and the degreaser you know anything greasy and dirty whatever now don't use this as is flammable don't use this under the engine bay like in the engine bay when it's hot and whatever you might spray it on it might end up going up in flames that's where you use water-based type stuff so i hope that helps sometimes people ask some simple questions um, it's always worth referring to your workshop manual for the basics it saves any confusion with exactly what engine we're talking about. Um, I'm personally very busy. Um, can't really afford to waste time spending time on answering simple questions like what oil do I use and, and the oil arguments people want to have. Not really fussed about what oil. Uh, most oils are pretty good. They'll do the job. The most important thing is you're changing it now. Somebody did ask recently, uh, there was a discussion about how much oil... Uh, I think we might have even done a video on how much oil um, they the 1KD should use and how much oil they take at an oil change, which is about 7 litres. Um, and someone's comment was, the 1GD, how much does that take? Well, you'll find in your workshop manual, it tells you that without the oil filter, it says 7.2 litres, and with the filter, it says 7.7. .7. Now, the reason there's a big difference there and not with a 1KD, the 1KD can mostly drain backwards because of the orientation of the oil filter. With a 1GD, 1GD, it's upside down, you know, so it holds the oil, if you know what I mean, so you lose more when you change it. So the answer is, it uses a bit more. It's about half a litre more, depending whether you change the filter or not. There is a greater difference there. Um, and pe next thing people are going to say which oil certainly not that same oil that you use in a 1, uh, 1kd you need to have something that's specifically designed uh, for a vehicle with a dpf filter otherwise you're going to cause some problems there and they do prefer thinner lighter type oils like they say they prefer a 030 they say a 530 is okay but you can't just look at the guides in the first three words you've got to read right into it and you will find it says you know um that you know you may you know an oil with a higher viscosity you know or a higher value may be better suited if the vehicles operate at high speeds or under extreme load conditions and that's what i'm saying they might recommend a 030 um, now that's a new engine when the engine gets older then it's going to need possibly a thicker oil and if it's used up north in hotter temperatures long highway driving loaded towing that sort of thing what's this this is our window sticker these are our Oz Prado Crew sponsors. Why are they our sponsors? Because I asked them to. So these are brands that we know and use, brands or business. Let's quickly go through Melandi Outdoor Adventure. They supply all your camping, uh, some of your four-wheel drive requirement type gear and camping gear. You'll find them at most of the four-wheel drive shows. Every battery, they've got branches in, started in Tasmania, they're in Melbourne, they're in, you know, there's about four or five shops around Melbourne. We use uh, Heidelberg, so if you talk to the people at Heidelberg and say, Anthony, Anthony Prado, Fulvio, Oz Prado, Chris sent you, certainly you might get a little bit better service. iDrive, Oricom, Century, of course, Century batteries are sold at every battery, Kaon, up in Queensland, manufacturing Australian made quality components, and they listen. So as we need things, they go ahead and design a lot of time into the design and manufacture of the right things to suit our Prados and stuff like that. Red Arc, of course, quality Australian made components for your isolators and chargers and stuff. Dobinson suspension, uh, roller roof racks, roller Titan tray and of course ARB. So these guys are sponsors because we ask them to. It's a lot of the brands we use and recommend. Um, so 
if we we're not going to have sponsors that we don't use and recommend if you know what I mean so they're by our choice okay so butter bing I've said it before I'll say it again there's all the pages and the channel and the phone number now if I don't know you the phone doesn't ring okay so there's no point ringing you can try and ring if you like feel free to try it it'll come up as a missed call you need to send me a text message okay if you're ringing to purchase parts because people are saying how do we make purchases okay how you do it is you buy, you shoot me a text message to that number with your name your vehicle details and what you need and I will call you back and we can discuss it and fine tune exactly what you need the other information pages we've got at the top underneath where it says Facebook pages the next two lines the groups there's some other groups as well but they're your main ones the two Oz ones Oz Pradica, Oz Hilux crew if you're in Australia you should be in those groups um, the ones below that if you're overseas that's included for you guys as well more specific around the engine so Toyota 1KD FTV injectors and engine one hashtag 1KD forever crew Obviously underneath that, the client only group, that's 4 before diesel VIPs, that's for people that have made purchases, that's got all your awesome full length videos, how to replace, all sorts of how to do jobs and that. And of course, you're looking at YouTube, 4 before diesel. Okay, if you're not seeing a lot going on, on this here, um, on that, on this YouTube channel, maybe because we're taking a break, so... We do that, so I'm going to put the phone here, hopefully it doesn't ring or something, but let's just have a look at this, we'll hold it up. If you're not seeing a lot happening on this channel and you're stuck at home avoiding the coronavirus or you came back from overseas because you insisted on travelling when maybe you should have not, but anyway, that's another story, but yeah, in self-isolation self, uh, uh, self for 14 days and you need some entertainment, okay, you can come onto our other channel. So this is 4 Before Diesel. We've also got 4 Before Adventures. I think it might be called Oswald. Let's have a look what it's called anyway. So there's a whole heap of videos there. Let's have a look at this one. If you want to try and find the channel, you can search, what's this one called? Sand Driving Info 101. There's the picture of what it looks like, the thumbnail. See the second one down, right? The Prado on the beach here. Let's, let's get that going and just see. Let's get the information for you. There you go. It's called Sand Driving Information okay, 101. So and the channel's the called 4 4 Touring line. Australia. There you go, you can and see it there. Kind of anyway, let's get rid of that. Just wanted to show you, if it's a little bit quiet on this channel, that's because we're out. And, and there's a lot to learn about your vehicle there as well, okay? So that's Sand Driving 101. So you're going to learn how to use your vehicle, Some a lot of sand driving tips. That video, that video goes for 42 minutes. I specifically did that to help people with sand driving. Now, there's a whole lot of info out there on how to do things, but there's a lot of, there's kind of a lot of wrong information. This is the problem. So we try and keep it clean, accurate. We do our research. We're out there using the vehicle and been doing so for years, the vehicles, I should say. Um, so we've got a fair idea, really definitely not what works, and we're going to use our uh, on uncommon common sense to explain it to you. So um, maybe get onto that channel, subscribe, so that as videos come through, you got the information, you can maybe see what we're up to as well. Now I did another video on this k -on bracket and this compressor where it sits in behind here, and um, it seems to be tucked neatly in that corner, pretty well protected away from water and heat and everything like that. Someone did ask, um, are you going to show us about the wiring or something like that? Well, it is a little bit difficult because we've, I'm not sure what we put in the video, but I would have thought we showed a little bit of that. Maybe I didn't, but I can give you a rough idea. Um, obviously, this is what I normally, don't normally install and stuff like that. Everywhere we run wires, we run corrugated split tubing. So you can see everywhere, you know, make sure your wires are away from anywhere that's going to be hot. But... To give you a rough idea, um, it's going to be difficult, but what I can do, I can try, okay? So the compressor's obviously mounted there. Um, obviously, the plugs to the solenoid net, you can see the red and the blue. The main compressor plugs in. That wire here that runs alongside there, where does that go? It goes along here, and we've just got the fuse jammed at the side next to the battery and the body of the car there. It's just sort of sat in there nicely, and that wire goes across nice and neatly, not rubbing on anything, corrugated split tubing, all the way across underneath this plastic cover, corrugated split tubing, zip ties, and it comes out here, right, nice and neat. Okay, we've got one zip tie holding that wire there, so it doesn't pull 
on the other end and, and the little black wires so they both go on the battery together right so they come in so you can see the little one there and the two go into that um, what do you call it <laughs> get crimped in there together anyway and of course the negative uh, the positive splits off and goes that way and that's why it's got the corrugated split tube and we cut the hole a little bit bigger so that's basically your battery connection I'm not saying this is the order you do it I think that might happen last um, so it came around under there like I said, there's your fuse. Nothing, nothing else comes around here. We put the switch right here on the bracket. Um, there's a relay. There it is mounted there. We use an existing hole to mount the relay right there. All the wires are wrapped up nice and neatly, zip tied together, and tucked down way down behind there. You probably can't even see them. They'd be. I'll try for you. I'll try, but they're down there somewhere. Right, I'm trying, guys. Yeah, it's not happening. Anyway, they're down there. I'll switch that off again because I bumped it. But anyway, you get the idea. It's all nice and neat. There's no wires to be seen. Um, and the only two wires that went inside, and it's not through that hole, that is our power from the auxiliary battery into the vehicle to power our USBs in the dash. The wires that went in, they went in a bit further down where the washer bottle line goes through the grommet. We tucked them through with there. Two small wires, one's asking for ignition and one's asking for... Um, when the light, the lighting signal or whatever, we just join them both together to um, the ignition supply, which there's a fuse box panel underneath the dash, which we'd already used for our wire, for our, let's come back over here for a minute, for our projector, there's an ignition sensing wire, which I'll tell you on these vehicles, you don't need to use. You can use it if you like. We didn't use it, it worked fine. We connected it, it works fine. So either way it works fine. So. But you don't have to, okay? So I just want to explain that. So we already used, we already had a connection there um, from the ignition. So we just spliced into that wire and joined. So now we've got that ignition and the two that to light up this switch. Obviously, the switch doesn't light with the lights. It's on all the time when the power is on because we went straight to power, if you know what I mean. So anyway, that's it. I don't know what else I can tell you about the wiring. So, so you've got to watch these videos. This one's a bit of a mix-up. All sorts of info. Just a quick little bit of info on the Roller Titan tray. We're really happy with, you know, these are rock solid. They're a lot cheaper than the Rhino and very strong. Very happy with that. I suppose the only part that's a bit disappointing is it seems to be the only place you can really buy these is super cheap auto. So I think there needs to be other dealers. So if anyone watches this that wants to be uh, selling Roller Titan trays, um, could be something to look into perhaps everybody should contact roller with an email just saying hey anthony prado forby from four before diesel and oz prado crew has basically recommended these roof racks but we're having trouble getting either stock of those or the right mounting kits and the advice because you don't always get it that well out of super cheap auto you need to have some other deals or options because i think that's what needs to happen if you are in australia and you have a 150 prado and you're in Oz Prado crew and you want to support the crew, support the sponsors that support us. If you're in Victoria, you can order a sticker with me. Basically, you just shoot me a text message to that same number. Say, hey, I would like one of those stickers. I'll send you the details to pay the money into the charity account. We've got a separate account um, that we raise a bit of money for different charities and stuff. So we put a small markup on these things. It's amazing that we've been able to get them this cheap. They're 50 bucks. If you pick it up, I'll help you put it on. You can watch the video. I've got a video on YouTube. It's on private, but I can send you the link on installation or you can have a look at it in Oz Prado Crew. We've done a little bit of testing with a handheld and this permanent mount antenna on this k rear mount bracket, which we told you about. The antenna seems to work quite well considering it's down behind the back of the vehicle in sort of hilly terrain and stuff like that. It did okay, it did a couple of Ks at least. You know, it was pretty hilly and built up houses and trees. It wasn't flat open road. So I'd probably say quite a few Ks as that is. The one thing I wanna say, it did make a massive improvement. See, we've just got the short little Oricon whip on there at the moment, so we're for our roof clearance, if you like. Um, but when we go out on a trip, we put the longer one on and that does seem to make a big difference, probably almost doubles the distance. Once your vehicle becomes a bit older, or perhaps from the start, there's a few what they recommend as daily or weekly or monthly checks. Let's just go through when you pop your bonnet. I'd suggest these are checks that you probably want to do if you're on a trip. So if you're going on a trip or you're on a trip, you might want to make these daily checks. The reason being, you know, daily checks when you're around town, if, if you don't check and something goes wrong, well, you can usually get help. If you're in remote places, 
uh, the help's not always there. So you want to know about something as soon as possible so you can make a decision where you're going to head to. So some of these checks are, just on a visual, you can have a look at your brake fluid level. You can have a look at your coolant level. So the red there, you know, that's around about the level it needs to be set at. Um, you can obviously check your oil level by removing the dipstick. You can have a look at your air filter on any of these Toyota vehicles, the 1GD or the 1KD. See that little hole there? Gives you an indication of how dirty the air filter is. On the 1KD it's pink, on the 1GD it's blue. Okay, so if you check and clean your air filter, and you can even put it back in and wipe that hole clean. So when you go on a trip, you've got a fair idea how much dust has got to that filter, you know. And you really just need to look at those a lot and then look at the filter to get a guide of how dirty it is. But without opening it and risking contamination out in the dusty areas, you can just do so by looking at that hole. Not sure if you knew that, but anyway. Um, over this side, you can obviously have a look at your power steering oil level without taking any lids off. And as we said, checking the oil level. Yellow. Yellow is the things you're allowed to touch. Not much in these engine bays on the Toyotas that are yellow because not much needs to be checked. Of course, we've got the yellow Gentry Century Dual Force there and still currently running the standard battery at this side here. What do you do if you run out of fuel? What do you do if you run out of fuel? Well, firstly, you need to get fuel and put it in the tank. That part's pretty obvious, but for a lot of people, they're not sure how to prime the system. If you do run out of fuel, you just need to come, this is the same on any diesel, most diesels, we'll say any most, usually sort of, kind of maybe. Um, you find your fuel filter, which is this, it looks like this, it's got the pump on top. And you, once you've got fuel in there, pump it like that till, see how it's gone firm? I mean, you can force it in, but it's got, it's got fuel there, okay? So, we'll add a little bit of extra info to that. You may not have run out of fuel on your gauge, and you could have that fuel transfer problem that some people have, it's very rare. But let's talk about it, let's get the information out there. If you... If your vehicle comes to a stop, nothing stops Prados, okay? You can have other little issues, but nothing stops them, generally, other than fuel. If you've got fuel, you've certainly got an engine, and you've got injectors, and if you've got fuel pressure, which all you need for that is fuel, if you've got fuel, she runs. Might not run well, you might have other issues, very rare. So, if you've got the fuel transfer issue happening, um, then the deal is, what you need to do is pop your bonnet, you run, you've, the vehicle's come to a stop, right? You've probably got your 90 litre light on in a 120, about half of that left, or about quarter of a tank in a 150 maybe, give or take. But that's what people are reporting, you know, about uh, you know quarter, or a bit above quarter, the few people that it happens to. Then you come out here and you pump this up, and if you feel you're pumping it up, and then the car starts, but it stops again, and then you go to pump it again, it's gone soft again. And as you keep doing this, it gets worse and worse. Then it's probably, there's no fuel coming up. And you're looking at your gauge going, well, hang on a minute. I've got fuel there. Well, this is what your issue is. So you need to get more fuel. The good news is get more fuel into it and it'll work as per normal from full down to around about that point. So take note how much fuel it takes. Sometimes they can be slow to fill as well. You can have that issue while you're having this issue. Um, slow to fill or you've got to fill a bit and then drive a bit and then try again so anyway hope that helps yeah well with all this coronavirus seems to be you know spreading around pretty well around the world there's a lot of suffering going on and what we've got to remember is we've got to sort of look out for ourselves a bit but also look after each other okay uh, it works better as a team so remember to you know have some you know have some heart you know what I mean? Um, be kind. Um, just have some empathy for others through these times. The last thing we want is, you know, the animosity and cruelty. A lot of that's going around. But look, it seems to be changing a little bit and it's getting more where everybody's going to sort of work together and help each other out. So that's good. Everybody just needs to relax, stay calm. It's what it is, step by step. So, you know, the panic buying, as I said, I understand people why some people do that it's not necessary here in australia there's plenty of food so we don't need to do that and i'd suggest it's a bit risky going shopping all the time because that's how things are going to spread like the schools and stuff like that so i think that'll come schools will come to end soon enough um, you know come to an end as in 
you know, they'll uh, they'll finish up early. I don't know if they're going to go back this week. They say they are. They say it's optional. So I haven't decided yet what we're going to do there in that respect. I don't think school will be going back after Easter. Um, personally, I think they're going to need to uh, lock it down. When you look at what's happened every in every other country, unfortunately, um, things spread fast. And I bet a lot of places are wishing they did things sooner and that's what they've recommended to us so perhaps that's what we should be doing each to their own you've got to respect everybody's got their own understanding on what's going on from the information that's out there there's a lot of sort of wrong information so I'm not giving out any information I'm just saying it's what it is um, possibly it's worse than they're telling us that doesn't mean panic what it means is maybe you should stop going to the shops maybe you should stop going to the schools maybe you should stop going out but then if you feel fit and healthy and strong and you want to go out and support those businesses then go ahead and do that what are our movements here we're going to sort of quieten down a little bit um, get a bit of the maintenance and things like that out of the way as far as um, servicing and repairs go we're going to have a bit of a quiet time and a bit of a break where as far as parts supply go if you want to get some parts obviously if you want to get your injector kit so you've got something to do in case you end up having a quiet time please shoot me a text message melbourne monday morning 9 a.m 23rd of march is kind of like our last day you know i don't know if you know already but um parts monday is parts day monday is the day to contact me if you want to make inquiries about anything including parts or if you've got one of those harder things you need some help with Monday morning's the time for that. You still need to text me what it's about. I, if you've purchased parts, you're stored in the phone, the phone rings, you will most likely get an answer. But if I'm busy, obviously I can't do that. By text me what it's about, I can prioritise the urgency. If it's what all to use, as I've mentioned earlier in this video, it's not going to be high on the priority list, guys. Sorry, the small things. That's why we've got these groups on Facebook, which we keep showing you over and over again. And we've obviously got to do some things over and over again. We've got these groups there for that reason. A lot of these people have already know about and done the work. They've learnt it from me. They can give you the answer. While I'm busy, you know, I'm off, you know, doing what I'm doing, doing the repairs, helping the 4 before diesel workshop partners in their workshops with their repairs um, and that sort of thing. There's a whole lot of stuff for me to do. Unfortunately, I'm not always there to answer your question and I can't just be taking calls on small things, if you know what I mean. I hope you understand. Doing everything we can. It's working out really well. Um, please go to the groups. Those groups are a go-to to ask your questions. That I check usually a few times a day, a quick check, a few minutes. I'll go through. If there's any questions, I'll try and answer. It might be a quick one. You understand I'm busy. It might be a quick one. If you want a long one, you need to wait till later. Or if I haven't answered in detail, it's probably because it's in a video. So search the channel. You go on 4 before diesel and you search that channel and put in all those keywords, anything that it possibly might be. SCV, suction control valve or injectors, whatever you want to know about. It's the same in the groups. Search in the groups. It may have been asked before. So these masks here, um, they don't work. Okay, so masks don't work. I wouldn't worry about that too much. If you're genuinely worried... I think you should stay home as much as you can. Limit, you know, limit what you need to do. That's the deal, right? That's what they've said. That's consistent in every country that, um, you know, that, what are they calling this? Social distancing. I think we've been doing it for a couple of weeks. I suppose before they asked us to, we I personally stopped the handshaking. You saw that. Some people won't like it, and they can call it un-Australian, call it whatever you like. But it's wise, okay? Let's be wise about what we do. No uh, spreading anything we don't need to. You're not going to be bored. We're going to keep you entertained with these videos. <laughs> now, you've got an opportunity to go back and watch all the other ones, work your way back through slowly, because there's a whole heap of information there, and I didn't do it for my fun and entertainment. So that's the deal as far as parts go this Monday. Then you know what? As I've said in other videos, there may be a shortage of some supplies as well. So um, don't. Ex normally what we do is it's a same-day service. You know, you pay for it same day, it gets shipped out, you get it the next day, express post. Don't rely on these sorts of services at the moment in the coming times. This week you can probably rely on it, but Australia Post have warned us as well. Warned us of possible delays. I'm warning you of possible delays with suppliers. We've got dozens of different parts and components here that we put into our kits, each all these different kits. So please be aware of that. Just trying to provide customer service in advance and let you know you have been warned. All right, guys, stay calm. Look after your families. Hopefully you make the recommendations for everybody. 
um, that those more at risk, you know, lay low, that sort of thing, and stay away from it. If we stay out of the shops, that's better for not spreading it. It's better that the shops are stocked. It's better that then people can do online ordering than just those few trucks are out on the road making the deliveries, drop on your doorstep, whatever. As we say, bada boom, bada bing for now. For those people that want to know about TechStream, I don't know a lot about it because I use other software and scan tools and stuff. Um, years ago, I thought, well, I suppose I better get that to um, get it all running and so that I can, you know, I suppose use that program a bit and know how it works and answer people's questions. But it's all pretty straightforward because people do it themselves and figure it all out. The deal is, you know, most people get on eBay, you pay about 40 bucks or something, you get your software and you get a cable like this, right? This plugs into your laptop, USB, this plugs into your motor vehicle, right? You can, uh, you know, OBD2 communication interface, right? Standard interface, whatever, right? So that'll work. Um, if this doesn't work for you, then I'm sure there might be someone else out there, one of your mates or something in the Prado community. You know, the Prado community, we're all sticking together, helping each other out, like the rest of the community, help each other out with a bit of software. You know, you put this onto your laptop, you don't need the disc anymore. So people can share the software around. It's just this lead you really need. Um, and if you're handy with computers, you can get it all up and running and you'll be able to check your vehicle, put in your compensation codes, do the pilot learn. You just need to look through the program and find the buttons. A bit of patience. We don't have a video on that because I don't use TechStream. If I get some time over the coming month or two, let's just see what happens. Possibly we'll be able to uh, get TechStream up and running, plug it in and show you what that looks like. But other people have done it anyway, which is why you need to be in the groups and uh, just have a look what they're showing you. In Oz Prado crew, we do have a little bit of merchandise. We've got a few of those t-shirts left, those Dobinsons ones. If you want one of those, just shoot me a text message or reply, just search in the thread. Same with stickers and stuff like that. We've got a few of those. Uh, we're organizing some more t-shirts. So we're gonna have some more um, awesome t-shirts. Decent quality indeed. We're also arranging some hoodies and polo tops. I think they're gonna be the first things for now, I think. Um, probably some more t-shirts, some hoodies, and then polo tops. We'll let you know once they're ready. And yes, we've got a whole heap of Oz Prado Crew stickers available. These are normally available by searching in Oz Prado Crew. Search the word stickers and it will show you the account to make the payment. Uh, Nigel takes care of that. He's taking a break from it at the moment, but you can go ahead and pay for them. And then obviously that helps us with ordering quantities and stuff like that. We don't send them out every day or every week. Guess what? We've got better things to do. Unfortunately, we're not sitting there waiting for the next order. We're not going to be having... A caribbean crews and cuban cigars you know money for charity and um at the end of the day yeah they're going to go out every few weeks okay so whether it's two weeks three weeks four weeks whatever you just get in you pay your money and you wait for them to turn up provide the delivery address to the email address the other way you can get them is if you let me know you want to grab one and you're coming on a day trip or you're coming to the workshop or you're going to see me or meet me somewhere the case may be we have these on hand and uh, Nigel will be able to send some more out. He'll do another batch shortly. A little bit of information about some oils. Okay, so in the 150 Prado, if you haven't got lockers, that gear oil there, Penrite gear oil, premium mineral. That includes for LSDs, even though you haven't got LSDs, it's just over spec, it won't hurt it. You can use that. You can use that in, of course, the 120 front and rear as well. So it covers all the diffs in all the Prados. Um, subject to they recommend arb recommend not using limited slip oil so it's got the additive in it on because that does the damage to the seal is one of the things they say so i recommend against that if you've got a locker use a different oil you can use the uh what's it called um i've forgotten anyway you know it's got the blue label on it anyway there's a few different ones look it up i'm just letting you know what you can use not what you can't use that oil that one right there that gear oil is good for all your diffs as long as you haven't got lockers okay now on the transmission side of things, the A750F 5-speed, basically for a long time, this FS here has been about, right? That's the FS here in this container and that one over there, got a couple there. Um, that was around long before the LV. So the story goes like this. So on the container down there, if you look down here, it doesn't actually say, you know, Toyota WS, it says other Toyota specs. So many years ago, heaps of people were using it, no problem. Uh, Penrite was recommending you could use it. We spoke to them and they said, look, 
it meets as far as the spec you can use it it'll be fine it'll do the job just as good or better but technically I don't know the technicalities on why not but it didn't have that on it because it didn't 100% meet that specification a few years ago Toyota came out with basically the same not Toyota Penrite came out with the same thing except it's called LV instead of FS it's in a kind of blue container it's got a bit of blue acre greeny blue kind of turquoise kind of writing on it it just says the same thing full synthetic ATF LV is what it's called instead of FS I spoke to Penrite they tell me it's basically the same it all is in quality and everything the difference is that LVs for low viscosity it's just such a tiny amount different okay so you can use the LV if you like probably someone had to pay someone some money to get it to say Toyota it does say Toyota WS on it it says Toyota WS right under third Ford Mercon the second line down so 100% meet specifications so you can go ahead and use that if you're that person that needs to tick that box or you can save a lot of money it's more in stock by using these two um, and I think it makes a big difference this one says five times smoother on the LV it doesn't actually say that it says low viscosity right now in transmission specialist terms if you use an oil that's too thin it can do damage and the transmission may not last as long so since there's such a small difference in it and we seem to notice that they run a bit smoother with the um, FS now don't get me wrong if you do a flush and put LV in it's going to feel great too because you've just put new oil in it but we seem to think that it comes up a little bit better with the FS but that could be just just wrong could be just the seat of the pants feeling that's wrong so anyway that's the oils we use uh, procedure we've got that around on different groups different people have put it up to procedure on setting the transmission I don't know if we've done a transmission oil flush and setting the level yet on a video but if we haven't we will get to that people have also asked um, what what greases and what rubber grease and stuff like that I don't really care it's kind of a bit of a greases grease and I'm a bit like that with oils the old thing with castor oils ain't oils we well, you know what oils are oils a little bit you know a little bit I'm gonna just absolutely say that but you know, the other day people wanted to argue about someone was saying pen rights. What is it? Thick and gluggy. <laughs> anyway, been using it for years. Never, it doesn't even come out thick and gluggy when it comes out a year later. Some crazy people leave it in there way too long. It's awesome, all the pen right stuff. Um, I'm not going to say the other stuff's any better or worse. I wouldn't know. I don't use it. And I don't care. I'm sure they're both fine. Not worth the argument. We'll use whatever oil you like. As far as grease goes, very similar. This sort of stuff you can use to lubricate just about anything. You can put in your grease gun for your drive shafts. You could put it in wheel bearings if you wanted to. You can put it in CV joints, whatever you like, right? As far as I know, I could be wrong. I'm not a grease specialist. Grease is grease. Marine grease, you're not really going to use that on much. We put a little bit of that on the hubs before we press the hubs into the um, into the bearing assembly. Ready for, you know, those front hubs for the Prados we build, put together and send to you. Ready for DIY fitment. Copper ease. You know, onto you know nuts and bolts and things that might be copping a bit of corrosion and you're having problems with. Um, we don't use a lot of that because we like to use grease as well. I use a lot of grease depending on what the application is. Um, and the rubber grease is like, yeah, it's that. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Pretty new on that one, actually. Where are we? There it is, that stuff. And you, what do you use that for? That's kind of um, air filter, you know, on the air filter. So there's rubber grease. Like the PBR rubber grease you use for building calipers, you need that if you're building calipers. This is a different kind of rubber grease. This is more for, um, yeah, I use it on the air filter perimeter on the rubber seal to help seal that properly. Been doing so for decades. And the other thing you'd use it on, if you had squeaky suspension, like on your rubbers, the shockers, look on the Prados and all the gear we use, there's no need to put any grease on anything. It doesn't squeak or you can put it if you like. Sometimes it might stop a bit of rubbing back and forth but sometimes it can allow things to move that you don't want to move so yeah I'm, I'm got to be honest I'm undecided on whether you need rubber grease on any suspension rubbers and that I don't use it um, but I'm not going to argue the point that it may be better with it or not whatever I don't care um, it, things that do move is like your your D rubbers you know in your sway bars and stuff like that you might want to pop a bit of that stuff inside those um, those rubbers that might help just with a bit of movement but the Toyota stuff doesn't squeak so you certainly don't have to do it they are some terrible brass washers look at those shockers they're all brass just had to put that in there oh not to mention those DLC command pistons that the coatings worn through just had to slip that in there quality control some people have asked how the big boss is going okay there's the big boss 
Okay, that's the Ryobi Impact Driver, which we've been trying to keep clean and trialling for a few months now. I am very excited about it. I like it. Okay, we'll bring the little boy over for a minute. This one, we've been using plus one since they were blue. Okay, so what do I mean by blue? I'll show you. They used to be blue like this. Okay, this is the old colour. I'm talking over 10 years ago. I think they've been out, what, about 10 years at least with this colour. Anyway, this is the little, little brother. It goes well. It only does about, I think, 40 Newton metres, but that's awesome for lots of things off and on. But the feedback on this is very happy. And I'd be very careful how I was going to use it if I was you, for the inexperienced people. You can see it's a three-speed. It's not really just three-speed, it's three-torque, if you like. Um, you're pretty safe on number one, okay? You can go zzz, anything on and off. Don't get me wrong, we're talking wheel nuts, not anything heavy-duty stuff like suspension components. You can zip anything off, probably, you know, one, two. But when you're putting it back on, if you're on one, I don't think you're going to do any damages. I can't remember what the torque settings are. It's probably in the book what one, two, and three does, but... They're quite high is what they quote, and I thought, nah, that wouldn't be right. But I'll tell you what, I reckon it is. If you put that on three and hit wheel nuts too hard, it won't take long, and you're just going to zip, <laughs> ping them right off, okay? So don't do that. What I would suggest is you zip your wheel on a number one. Get make The key is that they all go on evenly, right? You work your way around. Do, do, do. How do you do it for wheel nut, right? Opposite. Do. Okay, here we go. So we go do, 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 something like that, right? Like you draw a star or something when you're in prep or something at school, right? So, evenly. Make sure your nuts and your wheel and everything's square. Genuine wheels are best. Okay, we'll throw them there. Genuine are best. They've got a locating system on the back of them. There's a 45 degree kind of like bevel flange that it sits over the hub and it squares it all up nicely. And then those locating wheel nuts, they're just quite an awesome system, really. There's pros and cons of it, but it really works well to keep everything beautiful and Toyota like. I would suggest number one, zim, 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 right, put those in. If you're pretty confident, you can go number two, but I wouldn't hold the trigger. Number two will take it past the specification it's meant to be. It could possibly do damage. I wouldn't use it on three to put anything back on, to be honest. Um, number three is for trying to undo a really tight bolt, nut or bolt. Um, yeah, okay. Number three is if you want to tighten up that crankshaft bolt in the crankshaft. It's meant to be something like 325 newton meters or something like that. Let's see if I remember that one correctly. You get in with this on number three and you can go for it, okay? You can talk it off if you like as well or whatever. As long as it's what we call F-tight in the trade. It's one of those things that needs to be F-tight. The bolt's massive. This isn't going to break it off on three. Don't hold me to it. So I'm just going to, ref I'm going to retract that. Don't use three for anything if you want to be safe, okay? But you get what I mean. Okay, very happy with that component. A little bit of info on brake pads. Okay, this is a really important one. So this is where you get the little bonus. You get a little bonus if you keep watching, right? Now, put a comment if you kept watching, right? At this point, maybe do you press pause or wait till the end and just write, I kept watching. Anyway, what I want to say is, for years and years, for decades, we've been using Bendix pads, right? And for a little while now, we haven't been. And I'll tell you the reason why in a minute. I've almost forgotten the part number for the front. What are they, 14 something or others? Jeez, I've forgotten the number. The rears are 1200s, that's easy. 1470 something. Front pads in Bendix for a Prado. I can't, that's awesome, isn't it? I'm quite proud of myself for forgetting that number. I'm really good with numbers usually. Can't remember everything. These are front and rear pads for a 150 Prado, unless I'm mistaken, or unless something's changed. Um, I don't do a lot of brakes. I avoid most work that includes taking wheels off because I smashed my back in 2014. It's come back really good. It's awesome, as strong as an ox or whatever you want to say. The flexibility is not quite there, but we're going to look after it, right? Learn your lesson, you know, wise up. Did a lot of silly things before 2014 as well. Not anymore. All that heavy lifting, and that includes, unfortunately for me, lifting those heavy wheels and tyres off is going to be a rarity. So... Um, that's why I sort of help you out. I'm not telling you you should do your own brakes because it's a matter of life and death. It is dangerous. It's got to be right. But I can send you to someone who can do the job right. Now, the, the Bendix front pads we've always been happy with. The genuine pads that come in the cars from Japan we've always been happy with. Okay. See, there's a bit of a change here, isn't there? Um, what we weren't happy with is 
The Benix DB 1200s, the rears, they were never noisy or anything, but they wore down quickly. There was a pattern with a lot of people wearing rear pads down really quickly. All the cars were seen for service. They just weren't lasting anywhere near as long as those original Toyota ones, which I kind of think isn't fair, particularly when the retail price was higher than genuine Toyota pads. Um, yeah, so you've got to do the right thing. So we did this move over to genuine, thinking we were putting back in what was in the vehicle from Japan, thinking there yeah, that would make sense. Now, I'm not sure if it is or not. Some people say, yeah, the aftermarket ones are different manufacturing compounds and stuff like that. That may be the case, right? It could be different batches. I'm not sure what the problem is, but we've got a pattern of when using the, mainly in the 120, I think the part number is in YZAM or something like that. It's a different number anyway, it's not these. They'll fit in, they'll work. They'll fit the same, slightly different compound. You'd be able to mix and match, okay? It wouldn't be an issue, but obviously to do things right, we use the exact right part number for the correct vehicle. Now, we know people in Bendix as well, and we have been speaking to them over the last period, I'll say weeks, months, and even a year possibly, talking about this wearing out too fast problem with the Bendix DB1200s. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree with that. Please put a comment, yes, I agree, those 1200s wear up too fast if you saw this video. This is what's happening, right? They're working on a compound, trying to keep all the positives of that compound, you know, no other problems, and trying to get it to last longer, okay? So I think, I'm not sure if it's out or if it's been changed, I haven't been briefed on the actual information, but they are going to get us a number of sets. I'm not gonna tell you how many yet because can't make promises till it happens and they're in my hand, you know, believe it, you know, I believe it when I see it kind of guy. When the pads are sitting here on the bench, we'll talk about it. So we're securing some Bendix pads, okay? Now what we're gonna do, we wanna do a trial. If everything goes to plan, here you go, I'm gonna let some numbers out. If everything goes to plan, we're gonna want approximately six to 10 vehicles that we wanna get these pads into, right? So we might have a DIY brake pad day or something along those lines. You're gonna either get them, I haven't worked out the details, I'm just letting you know. They're gonna be either, they're not gonna be free, they're gonna be cheap because there's gonna be installation and we want them in, okay? So we need to take some details of the vehicles and kilometers and stuff like that. So we might have a rear brake pad, you know, rear brakes fitting day where everyone can come and learn how to do it and there'll be a selected number of vehicles that we supply the brake, but you might just have to pay for the pads or something like that. I haven't worked it out, whatever. It'll be good value anyway. You know, it'll be one of those things, any profit to the charity account anyway, so it's all good. Now, I'll let you know when it is, as soon as I know, once we've got the pads, that sort of thing, you know. Could pos I'll put it out there, could possibly be in April or May. Could possibly be in April or May, okay, could be. It won't be in June or July, it'll probably be in April or May. So keep your ear to the ground. This sort of thing, I'm probably gonna post up in Oz Prado Crew, but if you're in Australia, if you're in Victoria and you're watching this video on YouTube, you should be an Oz Prado crew, right? So if you swore and you got yourself banned and you want to get back in, just send me a text message and say, look, I did the wrong thing, you know, no worries. You know, we all make mistakes, I get that. We're really forgiving here in Oz Prado crew, so it's all good, that's how we roll. And, you know, happy to give you another go, but you just need to try really hard. Just it's. You can go swear all you like, I don't mind swearing. I'm just gonna not do it in the video and not, we're gonna keep it to a minimum, it's not necessary. Depending, you know, selective audience, you know, it depends where you are. I can adapt, no problem. Come and see me, do a bit of swearing and just see it come right back at you, no problem, okay? But just depends where we are. If we're in church, we're not swearing, right? So what I'm trying to say is, there's gonna be some rear brake pads and either free pads, free fitting, combination cheap, whatever it is, right? It's gonna be fun. Yep, if you see me walking around with this, this is the infrared thermometer, right? Let's check the temperature of the bench, 21.7. Let's check me. I'm 36.2. Now, if you saw that, I want to see a comment as well. I saw the 36.2. Tell me, you're, you're normal or you're not normal, okay? That's the comment, you're normal or you're not normal. <laughs> a bit of info, we don't sell the e-jar gaskets separately, okay? So they're just small stuff, we're really busy. We can't just be doing 100 packages a day with a couple e-jar gaskets. For... So I hope you understand that. All the gear comes in all the kits. So you can get this with the injector kit usually, is what most people do. Or you can, if you, even if you're not ready to do your injectors, you can get your wheel bearing kit and I'll put those in. Or you can get your timing belt water pump kit and I'll put those in. You know, you can get the other stuff and I'll put those in. You can certainly come and pick them up, no problem. 
but I can't be just making packages to send, you know. So all the EGR gaskets do the EGR clean. There is a number of them you need. You just probably need to go into your Toyota dealer. When we get some more time, we'll go through all the different ones. To be honest, this is the only one you need, which is why I've got this one. There's the part number. That's the only one you really need if you're doing an EGR clean. That's the one that goes between the elbow and the manifold. The rest, generally, you can reuse. And that's it. So thanks for watching. I hope you got some info out of that and it filled in some time for you. And if it didn't, well, it must have. Because you're still here. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.